Welcome to a Legendarium special about the history behind Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The Hunchback of Notre Dame tells the story of Claude Frollo, a degenerate priest who becomes obsessed with a gypsy woman named La Esmeralda and the growing involvement of his lackey, a hunchback named Quasimodo, who lives in his cathedral. Victor Hugo, the son of a Napoleonic military officer, decided to become a writer while still an adolescent. Although he studied law, young Hugo also founded a literary review in which he and other emerging writers published their work. In 1822, Hugo married his childhood sweetheart Adele Faucher and published his first volume of poetry, which won him a pension from King Louis XVIII. Perhaps in part because of this, young Hugo became a staunch supporter of the monarchy. He also became part of the Romantic literary movement, which sought a return to the imagined glories of the past after the endless upheavals of the the French Revolution and Napoleon's Wars. In 1823, Hugo published his first novel, Han de Island, and his 1827 play Cromwell embraced literary romanticism with its focus on ordinary people and their passions. The following year, Victor Hugo won a 4,000 franc advance from his publisher to write a novel, then a relatively new creation. Despite his publisher's generosity, Hugo instead went to work on two plays while spending the advance his publishers gave him. The first play, Marion de Lorme, was censored for its candid portrayal of a courtesan. The second, Hernani, sparked a bitter and protracted literary debate. And upon trying to sell the novel rights for the second play to a publisher, Hugo's original publisher became incensed and forced Hugo to complete the long-promised novel Notre Dame de Paris. Unfortunately, writing and publication would be interrupted by the 1830 revolution which overthrew King Charles X. Once the smoke cleared on January 15, 1831, Victor Hugo finished writing Notre Dame de Paris. It is known in the English-speaking world as the Hunchback of Notre Dame because English translators found this title more enticing to readers despite Hugo hating the change. Revolutionaries who plunged France into upheaval cherished order and precision in all things, from politics to architecture. In reaction to this, Victor Hugo's romanticism celebrated the imperfect and fantastical, for they regarded the human character as being imperfectible, so why not celebrate it? Additionally, Hugo wanted people to appreciate medieval Gothic buildings, which had become the object of vandalism and neglect. In particular, the Romantic movement saw the near-ruined Cathedral of Notre Dame as a symbol of France's glorious Christian past that radical revolutionaries wanted to destroy. Notre Dame de Paris was built between 1163 and 1345, meant to symbolize the might and piety of Paris and the French kings. Standing on an island in the middle of the River Seine, it saw the coronation and wedding of several French kings and queens, including Mary, Queen of Scots. After a wave of vandalism during the Reformation in the 16th century, modern French kings restored it. Indeed, architecture is a major theme of the book. In the medieval era that Hugo loved, architecture expressed big ideas before people could publish books in great numbers. Indeed, architecture and art communicated Christianity to people when most people could not read or write. There is a scene in Hunchback when Claude Frollo looks from a printed book to the cathedral and he says, this will kill that, meaning the book will kill the edifice.
During the French Revolution, rebels indeed mistook the statues of the kings of Israel in Notre Dame for those of French kings, and they beheaded those statues as they had beheaded their king, Louis XVI. They also made it the site of a new cult of reason which sought to replace Christianity with something more modern. During the 1820s, when Hugo started writing, renovation crews tried to restore some of the Old Testament-inspired sculpture. A carver named Monsieur Trajan described having a humpbacked boss almost exclusively called the hunchback. This likely inspired the character of Quasimodo. By writing the novel, Victor Hugo hoped to protect medieval Gothic architecture from being torn down in favor of more modern styles. A few Two years prior to writing The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hugo wrote an essay called War to the Demolishers, which attempted to get across the same point, but Hugo proved far more successful in persuading people to protect and preserve Notre Dame with his novel. Not only does the novel's action unfold mainly inside or around the cathedral, but from the top of its towers, Claude Frollo and Quasimodo can spy on almost anyone in Paris, something that helps to move the plot forward on more than one occasion. Hugo's book became one of the first novels to use a citywide sprawling scope instead of focusing on only one character. By doing so, Hugo looked at the whole of human life, from kings to beggars, and how great events turned their lives upside down. The novel is especially concerned with the theme of revolution and social strife, not surprising since Victor Hugo grew up during the Napoleonic Wars. Hugo set his novel towards the end of the Middle Ages during the reign of King Louis XI. Many romantics hated Louis XI as the king who did away with medieval values in favor of a modern, money-centered world. Most of the characters are orphans or come from families broken by death or dislocation, which reflected Hugo's France, which had many widows and orphans left by first the Revolution and then Napoleon's wars. Romantics viewed French society under the kings as one big happy family broken down by the revolution, and the breakdown of family units in the Hunchback of Notre Dame foreshadows the civil wars that divided France during Hugo's time. Hugo even wrote Hunchback of Notre Dame during the July 1830 revolution, which made him more aware of class divisions. For example, as the vagabonds prepare to attack Notre Dame, Clopin shouts, Trade is incompatible with nobility! Of course, the so-called nobles are a ragtag band of cheats, thieves, and performers seemingly mocking the idea of aristocracy. Victor Hugo's book became an immediate sensation and led to demands for a restoration of the cathedral. The architect Eugène Voliette le Duc began the project in 1845 at the age of 30. He took 25 years to take the cathedral in a new romantic direction. With fellow architect Jean Baptiste Antoine Lassus, Violette le Duc added ornaments and statues to the cathedral. Violette le Duc's iconic spire was made of 500 tons of wood and 250 tons of lead, taking the place of an unstable tower. The architect also surrounded it with fantastical creatures and apostles. Violette le Duc loved medieval Christian monsters and therefore added the iconic gargoyle statues to the cathedral. Thus the book, which Hugo believed killed architecture, not only saved it, but revived it. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.